In this segment, I'm making the user interface that will pop up when the player dies. I like to keep all similar blueprints and folders that are easy to identify. Create a folder for all UI widgets. In that folder, make a new UI widget. When I name widget blueprints, I start with WB underscore, then something simple like game over. Saving at first helps when you go into the blueprint editor. To keep it simple, just add an image container and center it. You can make it the size of the window if you want, but it's only a prototype. For me, I'm okay with a centered-ish image box. If this were more than a prototype, there would be artwork associated with this image with specific sizes and resolutions, but for now it's just a white background. I try to keep each component labeled properly in the hierarchy. These blueprints can include many components and it's best to continually build this habit. Next we'll add some text. This simply tells the player it's game over. I'll add a little fade effect to the background to make it less bold and increase the size of the text. In the real world, there would be a UI reference sheet with a specific font, specific sizes, and color schemes to follow. Having a plan that detailed would speed this part up. But remember, you can use this time to explore the options available in the UMG editor. Now I need a couple buttons. Search for button in the palette and drag it out into the designer field. If you drag the text onto the button, the engine will combine those elements automatically. I need one to retry the level and another one to quit or save or basically do something later when I figure out exactly what I need that system to do. For now, I'll call it Quit to Menu. You can line up your buttons using the positional anchors. It's a nice way to make sure you have some symmetry in the design. Also name the buttons a variable that makes sense. It's difficult to design a blueprint when you're looking at button 210 versus retry button in the window. I'm adding a mouse over type effect for these buttons for both the player and to give myself some feedback for testing. A green highlight will do just fine for now. Since I'm making up this color palette as I go, I will take advantage of the color saving feature. Simply drag the color to where it says drag colors here to save and you can reference the exact color later.
Now let's make this button do something. Let's fix this button 395 first. Again, slight oversight, but it's an easy fix. Head back to the designer, click button 395 in the hierarchy pane, then change the variable name of that button in the details pane. Now all two of my buttons have proper names. Selecting the button in the variables list will give you the on-click property easily. All I want to do is on-click restart the level. This way I can die and retry as often as I need to for testing. The other button is a quit game button, but for testing purposes I think I'll just stick with a print string and then I'll plug in a quit to menu later when I have that menu built. There may be a better way to do this, but this method works for me. The blueprint structure for these is pretty simple. Drag off the onClick event node into a get current level name node and from the executable of the get current level name node into open level. Use the return value from the current level name node and plug it right into the string pin of the open level and the engine will convert it for you. I'm going with a simple print string off the save and quit or quit to menu level button for now only because I don't have that level built yet and I want to show that the button is working. All that's left to do is call the UI window when my character dies. This is in the 2D side scroller character blueprint. Locate the death function and pull a delay node off the set visibility node in this blueprint. I like a little delay so my death animation plays and the player can realize what's happened before we create the widget for game over. You just have to create the widget, then add it to the viewport. Don't forget to show the mouse because we have it hidden during gameplay. If you have the mouse visible, then this step isn't necessary. Drag the executable off the delay node into a create widget node. Set the class to wb underscore game over. Drag the executable from the create widget node into an add to viewport node. Connect the object pin from the create widget node and add to viewport node. Finding the show mouse cursor node works better if you right click the blueprint space rather than having the engine try to find a relevant node. To do that, uncheck the context sensitive box and it should come up. I'm also going to update my comment here because now this blueprint is doing a lot more than just the animation. With a quick play test, we'll see if I messed anything up along the way. Gameplay looks good, and there I go. I died, and here's my interface. It comes up, and my buttons are green on mouse over. So I know something should happen. If I quit to menu, it should display my message, and there it is. If I retry, it should reload this level. Boom, there we go. Now I can test my levels as I create them, check for proper deaths, and retry as often as I want. Up next, we'll add some pickups and create a life counter. 